Hello, and welcome to a video on Moore's Circle, how to draw one and the conventions of. Okay, so here are the steps you're going to follow when you're working with the Moore's Circle. Now, before you even get to step one, you need to have your stress element, which will have your stress values and your shear values. <clears throat> from there, you can plot two points from it, a vertical and horizontal point. Then you can calculate the center and the radius and draw the circle. Now with your drawn circle, you can find, and these are the main uses of Moore's circle, the principal stress values and the shear, the maximum shear, and the transformation angle. Now the main usefulness of Moore's circle is that it's a visual guide. It, it helps you. You can look at it and go, oh, okay, these are the values that I'm working with. Now, look here we have our stress element. You may be used to having a sigma x and sigma y. Another way to think of it is that you have a vertical surface and a horizontal surface where each of these surfaces is defined by their normal. What is normal to the vertical surface is sigma v, which is the same as sigma x, which you may be more familiar with. It's the same story with the horizontal surface. You have your sigma h. There will also be a shear value associated with each surface. Over here, you have the axes that you'll be plotting more circle on, where horizontal you have your stress and vertical you have your shear. So using those axes and the stress element you'll get two points. One that is made up of the stress value and then shear value vertically on the vertical surface and then another point those same values but the ones associated with the horizontal surface. Now as far as the sign conventions go when it comes to stress it's simple tension positive compression negative that's always always true. Now when it comes to shear look on here positive is clockwise negative is counterclockwise so an example of how this works is if you look at this vertical surface, look at the shear associated with it, which way is it trying to turn the stress element? In this case, it's trying to move it in a counterclockwise fashion, which is negative. Here, on the horizontal surface, it's trying to move it clockwise, so it's positive. That's how you get your values, your uh, sigma v, tau v, and so on. So once you have those, you can plot it, and then you can calculate the center and the radius of the circle, where the center of the circle is basically just the average of your sigma v and sigma h. And the radius circle comes from the standard equation for any circle. You All you have to do is just plug in equations and it gives you the radius. Now this is an example of a completed Morse circle. And right here you have labels. Each of these points we're working with where here you've got your vertical point, here you've got your horizontal point, and here's the center of the circle, and then you could draw it. Now when to find your principal stresses, it's basically the two most extreme values of your stress. So here you can see it's the center plus or minus the radius. You can see that visually here. It's the center plus positive radius from it, you've got sigma p1, negative radius from it, sigma p2. That's shown in the equation right here. And then your shear stress, your principal shear stress is 
comes out to actually being the same as just your radius value or you can also calculate it through this equation here where it's just the same one radius except the shear value now there's also your maximum shear stress this will not always be the same as your principal shear it is only the same as your principal shear when you have compression and tension case where that will be say on your vertical surface you have tension and then your horizontal surface you have compression or vice versa as long as it has a tension and a compression cases where it's tension and tension or compression and compression your tau max will be different from your principal shear so you'll have to calculate it where you look at your maximum shear value your maximum stress value I mean minus the minimum divided by 2 okay so now we've come to finding the stress transformation angle or sigma p now what you always do with this is you look at the vertical point that you plotted and you go from the vertical point towards sigma p1 where that makes an angle on Moore's circle the angle that it makes which is labeled alpha is going to be two times what sigma p actually is this is the equation for find alpha and then once you have that you have to divide it by two to get the actual sigma p as far as sign conventions go the angle is positive when it's moving in a counterclockwise direction why is that well you can look at here because this one is moving counterclockwise towards p1 it's moving towards the positive part of the circle in this case it's moving clockwise towards sigma p1 which is towards the negative half of the circle thus count or thus clockwise is negative You'll also find that sometimes where this angle on the circle going from the vertical point towards sigma p1 is more than 90 degrees. In that case, this e same equation now solves for the complement to that. And because of that, the equation at the very end to find sigma p changes slightly, where you have to subtract um, alpha divided by 2 from 90 degrees. Here's the same thing except this time again it's going counterclockwise towards sigma p1 so it's positive. That last one is moving clockwise so it's negative. And that is it. I will have more videos where I go through example problems.